NASCAR fans everywhere are hoping and expecting the NASCAR 2021 schedule to be the biggest schedule change in its history. And in my hypothetical 2021 schedule, I bring everything that the fans are asking for. And that's next on Monday Morning Racer. <laughs> Hello race fans, Lee Kraft here, host of the Monday Morning Racer, and if you're a NASCAR fan like me, we're all looking forward to 2021 and the promises that NASCAR seems to intend to deliver that that schedule for that year will be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, schedule shakeup in NASCAR's history. We're hoping for new venues, venues that are boring to say the least, shifted and adjusted, if not taken away, and we're hoping to see short tracks, more road courses, and overall a spiced up schedule that produces great racing and challenges some of the best drivers in the world. And in this hypothetical 2021 NASCAR schedule, I give it to you all. We're going to have at least one dirt track. We're going to have more short tracks. We're going to have more road courses. And we're going to have venues shifted to hopefully produce better racing. All the while, going to two countries. We're taking NASCAR International. So, let's dive right in with our first venue. The first race of the 2021 schedule, as it should be, as it should remain, the traditional big race of the year, the brightest crown jewel of all the crown jewels of NASCAR racing, the Daytona 500 is where we will begin. Now, yes, we will still have the race such as the Clash, Take it back to a more original setup, though, of being a 20-25 lap dash with those that had won poles from the previous year. Still have the qualifying races on Thursday. I think NASCAR did a great job with moving those races from the day to the night. Allows from our viewers. I can remember being in school, missing them, being at work, missing them. So I'm, I'm glad that they are on. Thursday nights now, and then February 14th, the Daytona 500, 500 miles on the high banks of Daytona, restrictor plate racing for the biggest race of the year. Now, after Daytona, we're going to begin the Western Swing, and we're going to begin with a short track, but it's going to be a brand new short track that we have never visited. I imagine most of you have never heard of this track, and we take on the Western Swing NASCAR International. We go to El Dorado Speedway. Now, El Dorado Speedway is in Chihuahua, Mexico, and it is a .62 mile 20 degree banking, D-shaped kind of Richmond-Bristol hybrid. And I've watched some of the racing at El Dorado Speedway, and it has some great racing with the NASCAR Mexico Series. I highly recommend, take the time, look at some racing action from this track. I think this would be a great move for NASCAR. You begin the Western Swing, NASCAR goes international. Ladies and gentlemen, NASCAR is more of an international sport than it ever has been. It's been an international sport, frankly, since the 80s. Remember in the 80s, they took a trip to Australia for an exhibition race. In the 90s, you had two trips to a road course in Japan. One trip to the Oval in Japan. NASCAR does have an international flair and we stay within North America but we go international at El Dorado Speedway and this also fulfills the call of NASCAR fans to have more short tracks. So after the brand new short track venue at El Dorado Speedway we then travel on to ISM Raceway, or as I still like to call it, Phoenix. We raced at Phoenix. After Phoenix, we go on to the Diamond in the Desert, Las Vegas in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we'll enjoy watching the races that are here. It's a great venue with its progressive banking, and the track is began to get a little bit of an age to it. It produces good racing. Enjoy the racing out 
in Las Vegas. After Las Vegas, we go on to Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. This track has got old, it's got bumps, it's got character, and I remember a time when I did not enjoy races at Auto Club Speedway. But over the years, this track's aged, it's got that character to it, and it has produced some good racing, and I look forward to the cup cars going to it now, opposed to many years ago. Now, up to now, we've had a restrictor plate race, we've had short track racing, we have had speedway racing on the mile and a half, but for the first time for the 2021 year in my hypothetical schedule, we are going to go left and right on March 21st in a familiar venue, but a venue that you have probably never seen so green. We're going to race at Sonoma while the heels are fertile and bright with all of their green luster. Now, mind you, if Sonoma is green, that does mean there's a possibility of rain. That's one reason why NASCAR does have Sonoma in its schedule where it is. It's a much more consistent weather date, but I would love to see racing at Sonoma with it being green. I have seen it green with other forms of racing, other forms of motorsports. I think NASCAR needs to venture out and get road course racing in early on the schedule. And this schedule would bring the left and the right within the first six races of the year. So after this western swing, we allow the NASCAR circuits to take a break and we pick back up racing action on April 4th at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We get Atlanta further into spring, hopefully having a better weather date for that track and a better date for fans to go enjoy a race at this aged, gritty track that produces wide lanes of racing from top to bottom for the drivers to use and for our enjoyment as race fans. After Atlanta, we go back to the state of Florida at Homestead Miami Speedway and enjoy a race on its old Atlanta-esque style track with progressive banking in the state of Florida. After Miami Homestead, we take NASCAR to a track that it has not visited since 2004, The Rock in Rockingham, North Carolina at Rockingham Speedway. I want NASCAR to go back to The Rock. That track was a unique track. Turns one and two are not like three and four. The back stretch is nothing like the front stretch. The front stretch is honestly like nothing in NASCAR anywhere else. It is a strange track, and I personally think that stock cars ought to race on strange tracks, just like Darlington. Darlington strange. That's something that is unique to NASCAR. They don't run on tracks that are perfect and laid out with a lot of runoff. That's not the idea. It's what can a full-bodied car that's heavy with a small tire do on a challenging racetrack. And I think Rockingham fits the bill. But in 2021, with my schedule, we go back to Rockingham and race once again. After Rockingham, we go to another short track, a three quarter mile asphalt short track in the state of Tennessee. No, not Nashville, but rather Memphis International Raceway. Now, why Memphis opposed to Nashville? Here's the reasons. Nashville has too many problems and this video at the end of it will have a video that I produced on those problems linked at the end that you can view at your leisure. The fact is NASCAR racing more than likely is probably not going to go back to Nashville. I know that there are those saying it's a possibility, but I believe there's just too much with the track and the town and the town having a bad relationship with the track and the city of Nashville embracing Major League Soccer. 
I think those issues are too great for Nashville to overcome. But for those of you wanting a Nashville venue, hang on with me through the end. There is hope. But we take NASCAR racing to Memphis International Raceway. After Memphis, we travel to the great state of Alabama and race on the high banks of Talladega. Let me say this about the restrictor plate races in NASCAR. These races, these tracks, retain their two dates of the year that they have traditionally held. Why? Because restrictor plate racing is unique to NASCAR. It is unlike anything else in any other form of motorsports. Yes, NASCAR runs ovals, so do many other motorsports. NASCAR could potentially run dirt, and we're going to get there on my schedule, but many other motorsports run dirt. NASCAR can go left and right, so do many other forms of motorsports, but NASCAR is unique in the restrictor plate style of racing. So whether you love it or hate it, Embrace it because it is unique to NASCAR and we need these races regularly represented within the schedule. From Talladega, we move to the Mother's Day weekend and we're going to run Martinsville under the lights. I think this will be a great brand new tradition that NASCAR has already established for the 2020 schedule and I retain it for the 2021 schedule. Martinsville under the lights on Mother's Day weekend. After that race there in Martinsville, we go to the state of Tennessee once again and it's at Bristol Motor Speedway with it being moved further into spring and hopefully that will alleviate some of the weather issues that this spring day has traditionally had for the day race at Bristol. After Bristol, we move on to the All-Star Race Weekend. And for this, I'm not going to give you a race. I want you to hit that comment section of this video and I want you to tell me, I want you to give input on this schedule of the Monday Morning Racer where we should take the All-Star event. Should it stay in Charlotte? I do enjoy it in Charlotte. Maybe go back to Homestead Miami Speedway. Maybe Bristol has a day race All-Star hybrid type of situation. What do you think should happen with the All-Star race in NASCAR? Put that in the comment section below. Now, no matter where we go for the All-Star race, the next Next venue will be Charlotte Motor Speedway on Memorial Day weekend, May 30th, for the Coca-Cola 600, the longest race of the year and one of the crown jewels of the sport there at Charlotte Motor Speedway. After this, to some degree, southeastern tour or southeastern swing, we give the NASCAR racers another break and we pick back up race on June 13th at a brand new venue and that venue is Portland International Raceway. Yet another road course. We're packing this schedule with road course action and this is going to be a brand new venue that NASCAR has not raced at breaking into the Pacific Northwest market. A win-win for fans as a venue and as a business market venture for NASCAR. Going to Portland International Raceway. IndyCar currently races there and they have some great racing action at this track and when you get the full-bodied cars that are heavy on a small tire as NASCARs are going left and right it's just as good if not better than short track racing I thoroughly enjoy when the NASCARs are on road courses so we visit for the first time in 2021 Portland International Raceway after that race we venture to Michigan International Speedway there in the great state of Michigan and allow all the Michiganders to enjoy NASCAR racing. We will be visiting just one time in 2021. After Michigan, we're back into the Northeast at Dover, Delaware, the Monster Mile. I love Dover. Fast, high banked, concrete, tight, multi-groove racing. It is a stellar track 
and they will be going to Dover on June 27th, right before the July 4th weekend, and the July 4th weekend will remain as it is on the already slated 2020 schedule for NASCAR at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. With this difference, we're going to have the Cup guys running the road course and not the Speedway as is done currently for the Brickyard 400 or the Indianapolis 500. This year, they do already expect some testing to be done by the Xfinity drivers on the road course to see what it might be for the cup drivers but in my schedule for 2021 we have the cup drivers going left and right at indianapolis motor speedway on the july 4th weekend after that venue we go on to kentucky they race at kentucky and then we move on to new hampshire another venue in the northeast but after New Hampshire, we go on to the second international race, staying though in the Northern Hemisphere and race at Montreal. Now this track has already produced some great racing in NASCAR. Xfinity has visited there a couple of times and it's been some good racing. And I want to see the Cup Stars get to Montreal and that race happen at the Cup level. So. Up to now, we've seen, yes, new venues. We've seen old venues. We have seen tracks that are of super speedway nature, speedway nature, and short track nature, but the next venue that we are going to go to is a brand new track for NASCAR, and for the first time in decades, NASCAR is getting back on the dirt at Knoxville Raceway. Yes, where they hold the Knoxville Nationals, the Daytona, as it were, of the sprint car world. We're going to Knoxville, Iowa and racing on the dirt with the cup stars of NASCAR. And, mind you, if it would work out this way, it would be August 1st of 2021, and that would make the NASCAR stars almost a prelude, a precursor to the Knoxville Nationals of the sprint car world. It would be a great racing week up there in Knoxville, Iowa. Let me also say this. Why not Eldora? I have no issues with Eldora, but the trucks have a great thing going on there. Tony Stewart and the staff there at Eldora have done a phenomenal job with the trucks racing there. But let the trucks remain there and let that be their venue and their place. And then send Xfinity to another track, maybe the Springfield Mile, maybe a dirt track at Charlotte or Las Vegas. I don't know. Send them to another dirt track and then send the Cup Stars to another venue. Matter of fact, let's make it Dirt Week in NASCAR and the top three series are racing on Friday and Saturday and Sunday at three different venues. I think that would be great in 2021. But the Cup Stars racing at Knoxville in Knoxville, Iowa. So after this dirt venue, we go on to Chicagoland Speedway. After Chicagoland Speedway, we venture out to the rolling hills of upstate New York at Watkins Glen International Raceway going left and right. Then on August 22nd, we come to Daytona for the end of the regular season under the lights for 400 miles to establish the drivers that will get to run in the playoffs for the championship. After this Daytona 400 mile race, we give the NASCAR stars once again another break before pushing into the playoffs. They get a bye week, as it were, and we set off the playoffs with tradition in mind under the lights, throwing it back at Darlington, the lady in black, the granddaddy of all speedways in NASCAR. Looking forward to that venue. I love that move that has been made by NASCAR because they're already doing this in 2020 and I retain it in my 2021 hypothetical schedule there on September 5th. After Darlington, we go to Richmond. But 
We don't run it at night. We run it in the day. We give it a different nuance from what has already been run in the spring. We run this Richmond race in the day to shake things up just a bit within the playoffs. The first cutoff race will be the Bristol Night Race, a prestigious race. I would count it again as one of those crown jewels of the sport. Drivers want to win this race and fans want to attend this race. And it is going to provide some great racing action being a cutoff race. I'm sure tempers will flare, the sparks will fly, and you will see the best come out, and possibly the worst, in NASCAR stars at Bristol Motor Speedway. After Bristol, we move on to the Milwaukee Mile. Yes, we're going to add Milwaukee into the playoffs, a brand new venue, be a challenge to NASCAR drivers to go somewhere brand new they have not been and be running for a championship. It would be a wild card almost, though it's not a super speedway, and see what happens with these NASCAR drivers with a brand new venue. I think that would be something that NASCAR should consider each and every year. Put a track in the schedule that throws a serious curve ball because you don't have a notebook for it and drivers have to learn on that weekend what are they going to do to be able to run and run well and run for a championship so we visit Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Mile. After Milwaukee, we go down to Alabama and race Talladega once again. That race is a race that the drivers and teams fear, fans look forward to, and it is a race that is so unpredictable. And it doesn't get any better, though, going into the next venue because we retain the Charlotte Roval, and it is a cutoff race. The drivers go back to Charlotte, run the Roval, which was a challenging course for them last year, but produced some great racing. Looking forward to them going again. I retain it on my 2021 schedule, and it is a cutoff race. You know that there will be some drivers cutting each other off left and right to survive the cutoff race of the Charlotte Roval. After the Charlotte Roval, we venture out to Kansas Speedway. After Kansas, we take it the tour out to Texas. And then we take the tour off of the mile and a half and put them on the paper clip for the day race at Martinsville. And this is the last cutoff race to decide the championship for, for NASCAR. Now, where do we take them after Martinsville? This is what I propose. A brand new venue. A venue that is in the southeast. A venue that will allow NASCAR, with their announcement that they are going to take the awards banquet to Nashville, they will be able to remain in town after running this race. I propose we figure out whatever needs to be figured out and we take the championship race to Nashville Super Speedway. And that is the finale for NASCAR. So. That is my proposed 2021 schedule. You have two international races. We have more road course races, more short track races, several brand new venues. I think this will be a challenging yet exciting schedule for racers, and I think this is a schedule that every fan can look forward to. So in the comments, remember, tell me, where do you want to see the All-Star Race and this. Where would you like to see NASCAR go for an exhibition race? In the past, they've gone to Australia. They've gone to Japan. I would love to see them go to Europe. Maybe somewhere like Monza. I don't know. Put in the comments below your thoughts on this schedule, where you would like to see NASCAR go for 2021, and let's all hope that 2021 provides the greatest schedule change in NASCAR history that we can all be thrilled about. Until next time, hit that like button, subscribe to the Monday Morning Racer, and 
God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.